Not emotionally ready for a team like the US where there is no pressure existentially. Stadiums were empty. You're playing in front of nobody. While you may think that nerves are an issue, look, all of us that lined up as we were going onto the field to play for our national team felt nerves. But that is part of being an international player. With all the pressure, with all eyes looking at you, and that's not quite the case in this country. No, I was going to say you in Venezuela. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, this is, it's not the same type of pressure. There is some pressure, not the same type of pressure. Regardless, any time that you step onto the field with your national team and you're about to head out onto the field, right? You're, here we go, we're lined up, here are the referees, here are the ball kids, whatever, we're about to go out. You're feeling the nerves. But you deal with the nerves. And that's the difference between players that are able to perform on that level and players that are not. So the fact that you feel like you're in the bubble and you cannot complete a five-yard pass because you're in the bubble, well, what does that say about completing a pass against Wales, against England? You think it's going to get easier? No, it's only going to get more difficult. The nerves are going to get even, even more difficult to deal with. If you can't do it now, I can't wait for you to be able to do it at the World Cup. I, can't, I cannot trust, and this is what managers do at the national team level, and I went through this. The first manager that I had at the national team in Venezuela did not trust me as a player. So what did I do? I sat on the bench comfortably on the bench. And while I traveled with the team and I practiced and I threw my body around and whatever else, he did not trust me because he didn't think I could do it at that level. Simple as that. This is what's happening here. How does Greg Berhalter, watching these guys out on the field, trust these players to do the job when the World Cup starts? Based on this evidence, you can't. And so then he has to look at how do we become more competitive? And I'm just going to address the point that Casey was bringing up earlier. The one reason that I would criticize Greg Berhalter is his insistence on trying to play this game of association when you don't have the players to do so. And so therefore, take away the nerves then. If you can't complete five-yard passes because you're nervous, then put it over there on the other side, 5-4 over there, win second balls, win a foul, and then you're able to establish some sort of rhythm in the attacking half. If that's, if that's what needs to be done, then do so. But it doesn't feel like that's a step that Bearholder is willing to take, even if it means dealing with nerves. How, how, does this ha how do you deal with this then? over the next two months, if you're great, how do you instill confidence in a team that's clearly lacking it? What, you send everyone Frank's book? What, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> send Frank to their house. I don't know. <laughs> it's difficult because now you're depending on these guys gaining confidence with their club individually. Right. They have to be playing and playing well with their clubs. And then, because you have an elevated level of confidence, then you come to the national team feeling much better about yourself and you kind of go, okay, I'm going to add this to the national team. I'm going to bring this because I know and I trust myself that I can do the job on a weekly basis as I've been able to do it with my club. The time is limited and the time is now. And a lot of these guys are not getting that playing time that we're talking about. And so for them to be able to then somehow recreate, generate this, this level of confidence, it's, it's empty, and that's, that's the part that concerns me. It would be empty confidence for a lot of these guys because they don't have a foundation to build on. So, Casey, is it just is it flippant of me to say you've either got it or you haven't and you can't teach it? Well, I mean, I think there's some aspects of that. So, I mean, what is the old adage as a pro? You play to your strengths and you work on your weaknesses. Um, Look, I knew what my strengths were. I knew what my weaknesses were. You know, I couldn't play like Ter Stegen does today or like Neuer does. That wasn't my strengths. Uh, and, and so and it wouldn't be fair for a manager to say, Casey, I want you to play this way because that's just not the player I was. And, and so I think that's, you know, to the point that Ollie was making is that Greg has to recognize uh, the players he has you know, the strengths and weaknesses of those players and set up this team accordingly to be successful. Now, in these games, sure, you can play the way you want to play knowing that the result doesn't matter. Well, it, when it doesn't work, confidence dwindles. Uh, so at some stage, 
you have to figure out the strengths and weaknesses of your starting 11 and gear that team to play the way it needs to play. Now, when you look at a team like Saudi Arabia, where everybody plays domestically, and I know Mexico did this in years past, they were able to have these extra camps that you know other countries don't have because their players are playing all over the world. So uh, the U.S. is going to have to do this via what? Phone calls? Via <laughs> Zoom. Uh, you know, <laughs> Zoom chats with players? I mean, so... Good luck getting that figured out, right? So you're, you're really almost hoping that something just clicks at the right time and in, in the right moment uh, because the whole buildup, you know, hasn't been what the U.S. has needed. We know it's awkward because of the scheduling, everything that comes along with it. But look, we've all played in teams that have had great preseasons and have had terrible starts to the year. We've, all, we've played in teams that have had poor preseasons and have great starts to the season. So, but it's going to take something special for this team to come out of this funk without being able to have a couple games to work themselves out of it. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.